له لا شريك لك اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله واصحابه تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين بعد و ستيل توكينج اباوت ذا ستوريز اوف ذا قران اند توداي وي غونت تيك ذا ستوري اوف اصحاب السبت ذا بيبل اوف ذا سبت ذا ساتردي ذيس ستوري از منشن ان ذا قران ان فايف سوره منشن فايف تايمز ان فور سوره اند ذير از ا كويك ريفرنس تو ات ان سوره البقره ان اذر سوره از ويل But the full story is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, and uh, this story is uh, is a story that has a lot of lessons for us. So let us go over the story, inshallah, and then get the lessons from it. Ashab al-Sabt are the people who lived in uh, in a village or a place or a city uh, right next to the the sea. Uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He started the story, and He said, "Wasalhum an al-qariyat al-lati kana al-hadr al-bahr." Ask them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the 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 ayahs talking to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to ask them, ask who the Jewish people, ask them about the city, ask them about this city or this village that was right next to the the sea, uh, and those people were Jewish people from uh, the people who believe in uh, the Sharia of Musa alaihi wasallam, the Torah of Musa alaihi wasallam. So that means they come after the time of Musa alaihi wasallam, but we don't know specifically what time or what Prophet was at their time. Uh, so it was not allowed for them uh, to work on Saturdays, as we know, Hormat Yom Sabt, the prohibition of working on Saturdays, and this is mentioned in their Torah. Uh, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tested them. Tested them how they were people who used to live mainly on fishing. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will let the fish, the big fish, come on Saturdays, Shurah. Uh, Shura means like uh, you know when there is shura. Shura means like uh, the the the, the sail of the ship. So the sh the, the fish uh, also when the fish goes like this, it is very evident. You can see it by your eye going. So when the fish used to go like this on Saturdays, that was so tempting to them. Uh, so uh, they they thought about doing something about it. So. Uh, either to be patient and hold himself back or to violate the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fish on uh, Saturdays. So some of them started to do hila. Hila like, you know, they do tricks to go around the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is also prohibited. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits anything in the sharia, then we must accept it like that. You cannot go around it. So they went around it. So they will put their nets. Uh, uh, before Saturday, like uh, Friday night, and then the fish will come on Saturdays. It will hold it to the nets, and they wouldn't collect the nets on Saturdays. They will leave it to the next day and then collect them on uh, Sundays. And uh, some others used to uh, dig, uh, make like pools next to the, the seaside, and open the water so that the fish will go. So, so they lock it, they close it, and then they catch the fish on the second day. So. When they did what they did, they know definitely that they were doing something haram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, prohibited. And here the Quran is saying a very definite uh, uh, word about it. It said, When they forgot about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded them about. Here they didn't really forget. When you know the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forget about it, that means you are ignoring it. So when he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expressing it, that they forgot what Allah reminded them or kept reminding them about it, they didn't forget. How we know that they didn't forget about the Sabt and they already know it's haram? Because some other group told them, minhum adaman shadida. So we know that there are two other groups. This group that violated the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so exactly like they forget about them or they ignore them and the other group that is advising them to stop uh, what they are doing uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it obligatory and must on the believers in every uh, time to command the good and forbid the bad if you are not doing this you are not a complete believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked about his ummah our ummah he says kuntum you are the best nation that came to the humanity. Why? You command the good, you forbid the bad, and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we have to keep doing. The moment that comes 
and all the Muslims see uh, the haram and see the fahisha happening in public and they are so quiet about it, this is the, the moment that the destruction will come to the, the, the ummah. And this is one of Sunanullah Ta'ala. Sunanullah means like the laws of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that, that they are not going to be changed. Whenever you see the corruption everywhere and the people are hush and quiet about it, whenever you know that the destruction is going to come very, very soon, sooner than you expect. In one of the battles, Abu Darda, the companion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after they won uh, over the, 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 the enemies and they seized the, the, the city, the big city, all the Muslims were happy and everybody uh, is trying to seize and capture the, 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 the slaves and the, the, all the, the gains of war and they were so happy. And you're going to find in the time of war, of course, families are separated. You know, the mother will be one side, the daughter will be one side, the father is one side. You know, everybody is everywhere. So the Muslims are so happy that they won. And Abu Darda took his sword, put it in one of the sides in the corner, and he sat there and he was crying. So a man passed by him and he said, why are you crying? This is a day of victory. We must be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us victory over our enemies. Then uh, Abu Darda started to say some uh, important and touching words. He said, "Ma ahwan al khalqi ala Allah." The people wouldn't, you know, uh, wouldn't be worthy in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when they violate the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and do the prohibitions publicly, like those people that we just invaded them. They were doing that. They were so safe and so quiet, living their normal life, just few hours before we come to them. Imagine if this is going to happen to us one day because of our sins and our bad deeds. We're not safe from that because uh, don't say just a group of people who are doing this. Uh, don't say as long as I am personally good, then I'm fine. I'm okay. No, because we see that. I'll give you another example from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked about Tamud, the people of Salih alayhi salam, uh, he said that few of them believed in Salih and the great majority of them uh, did not believe in him as you know but Allah mentioned specifically وَكَانَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ تِسْعَةُ رَهْطٍ يُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ he said in this city in this city of, uh, of Tamud the city of Prophet Salih alayhi salam you're going to find تِسْعَةُ رَهْطٍ nine people nine imagine the number is nine nine men يُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Spreading the corruption everywhere. وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ قَالُوا تَقَاسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ They said, let's give our words and swear by God. لَنُبَيِّتُنَّهُ وَأَهْلَهُ ثُمَّ لَنَقُولَنَّ لِوَلِيِّهِ مَا شَهِدْنَا مَهْلِكَ أَهْلِ Let us tonight kill Salih and his whole family and then in the morning we deny it. We say to his guardians and his family members, his uncles and uh, the, the, the members of the tribe, we, need, we never witnessed it. We don't know who killed him, who assassinated him. See the planning, the evil planning? وَمَكَرُوا مَكَرَ وَمَكَرْنَا مَكَرَ Allah Azza wa said that they planned the evil and Allah Azza wa planned the counter planning, how to, to, to stop what they are doing. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala went over them, of course. فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ مَكْرِهِمْ Look how it ended, their evil planning. أَنَّا دَمَّرْنَاهُمْ That I destroyed them. Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed them. وَقَوْمَهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ And all the people. So someone is going to say, it's only the nine people who planned to kill Salih and to kill, to kill the camel. But how about the rest of them? Because the rest of them were there when they started planning that and they were quiet about it. They were okay with it. So when you witness something haram and you're okay with it and you let it go, that means you are part of it, even though you didn't do it. Let us say in a crime. Crime is happening like some people are planning to kill someone. They sit like 10, 15 people there. Everybody's giving, giving his, they made the plan together. But just one of them executed the plan. He's the one who went to the house and killed the guy. When the judge is going to consider that, if he had proofs, enough proofs that they were all together planning that, all of them will be convicted. Yes, the person who did it will take more punishment, but still all of them will take judgment for that, will be accountable for that because they were part of it. So that's it. The, the people of the Sabt did the same thing. All of them were part of it. The, those who violated the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the thing is, 
it's not just a sin. There is there is some a big difference here between someone who makes a sin casually from time to time, and he does not intend to do it or insist to do it, and someone who is insisting on doing the sin or violating the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, even though he's reminded about it. That's a big difference here. Although they know that uh, working in Saturdays is haram and not allowed, but they keep doing it. It's part of the, they never denied it. They never said, no, it's not haram. So, but they keep doing it anyway. Like this is equal to that in, in the eyes of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So we have to be really scared when we hear about these stories because some people are reminded of not violating the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they keep doing it all the time. They never stop. So what does this mean? That means it's equal to the point that they are not believing in it. Because if you keep reading it, if you keep being reminded about it and you still do it, you have a big problem here. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when they kept, when they reached the level of Utu, Utu is like someone who doesn't really care about it at all. Then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to them, قُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal changed them literally into monkeys. One brother was asking me, Brother Muhsin was asking me, how Allah Azza wa Jal turned someone into a monkey just because he did a sin. They didn't disbelieve. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they just did this sin and kept doing it. This is how bad it is. When you don't stop, when, when, when you keep being reminded about uh, uh, the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he finished talking about that, he told us that he saved the people who command the good and the forbid the bad. They are saved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them in a, in a way that we don't know. And he punished those people into turning them into monkeys. But how about the third group that they were telling them, don't advise them and waste your time because it's not going to work with them. How about this group? They did not violate the commands of Allah, but they did not also uh, order the, the, the good and forbid the bad. Allah was quiet about them. Allah was quiet about them. We don't know what happened to them. Maybe they, they are punished in, in a lower level. Maybe they are saved, but they are not worthy of being mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Maybe they are punished also with them. Allah grouped them with them because they are very um, uh, passive about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, he will send to them. وَإِسْتَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ This is also one of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm not going to be changing. That it is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this nation, the nation of Bani Israel, the Jewish nation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send some people or groups from time to time to give them the worst punishment to the day of judgment. They will be like that. It is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From time to time they will have some ease, but another time will come and they will have some enemies against them. Why? Because of this thing. Not because, in, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, uh, to punish them all the time. Because of what they do. That they challenge the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said the following generations after this generation from Banu Israel. That فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهُمْ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفُ وَرِثُ الْكِتَابِ They inherited the book which is the Torah. But unfortunately uh, they will not apply the commands of the Torah fully. And they say, Allah will forgive us. So they are taking it easy in a lenient way. And it's not like that. You cannot ignore some comments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep doing whatever you want to do. And at the end you say, uh, I hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we must hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we must uh, be committed to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. So this story is not only about a uh, story uh, of history. It's a story that actually when we read it, we must apply to ourselves and to our modern life. Are we doing what we are commanded to do? Uh, do we uh, follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Is it only words that we're claiming that we love Islam and this and that, but when it comes to application, we do not apply Islam the way uh, we should? So this is uh, a life-threatening thing. And don't say, well, my life is going is doing good. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me healthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me money. So I'm okay because there is something called al-istidraj. Al-istidraj means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like making a trap for you. 
you are bad, you're uh, violating the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more money, will give you more time, more power. سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَأُمْلِي لَهُمْ إِنَّ كَيْدِي مَتِينَ So don't think that when you see the disbelievers or the people who violate the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their business is good, their life is nice, you know, don't think, oh, Allah is happy with them because of what they have. No, there is something called this Daraj, Allah will give them the time so that when he takes them and the punishment will come to them or even death comes to them, then they wouldn't say, we didn't get time. We, we, we are excused because like, you have your full time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you everything you want. So be careful of what you have. Because yes, in the hadith and the ayat. Hatta idha akhazala yuflitu. Yes, a lot of ayat and a lot of hadith about istidraj. I made khutbah one time about istidraj. Few people talk about that. And uh, mashallah, everybody was happy about it. Maybe one day, inshallah, we'll talk about this because uh, we are deceived in this life, Allah. A lot of things, we don't see them the way they are. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa sallam wa sallam wa barik ala nabda Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.